The IEC general meeting is bringing together so many experts. Opinions, thoughts and ideas are being shared here. And we are right now at the broadcast center stage and it will be very interesting to hear the thoughts of the head of certi certification at the Certification and Testing Institute in Offenbach, Dr. Klaus Kress. Welcome and thanks for being here with us in the broadcast. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Certification and conformity assessment, that's your daily bus business. What is meant by conformity assessment? Yeah, conformity assessment is uh, nothing else than uh, the comparison of a, a certain product which is probably compared with a requirement given, for instance, in a standard. That's all. So somebody is looking, is this product really conforming with the requirements written in a certain standard? Okay, so the focus is on conformity assessment um, during the general meeting. We've heard it so many times, the structure of standards could be or even should be improved in regards to conformity assessments. Um, from your point of view, which improvements exactly do we need? Yeah, if you look into different product standards and you compare the different standards uh, for different products, uh, you see that there are not so many different test requirements incorporated in these standards. So we have thousands of standards, but probably 50 or 60 different testing procedures which have to be performed uh, by uh, somebody who is really uh, uh, doing a test on this product in order to make a conformity assessment. So uh, the question is, uh, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be more efficient to have a kind of a toolbox describing these generic um, test procedures which can then be used for all these different numbers, uh, various numbers of product standards, instead of um, create in each standard again test procedures for the same requirement. For sure, there must be a certain application uh, for different products. You have small products, you have larger products. So uh, that can be done and must be done, the product standard. But the key requirement could be better described probably in a generic standard just describing the product, the testing procedure here. So in order to improve the coordination process, the toolbox mentioned would be a first step. What are the benefits of uh, such a box for the different parties involved? Yeah, if you look um, to the technical committees, for instance, they could then concentrate on their real product, on the requirement for this product, instead of thinking about test procedures. So if you can use this toolbox, it's much more easy than really to start from the scratch. So they can really save time. And you know, time is uh, the most uh, uh, important uh, aspect in nowadays uh, for everybody and uh, of course also for technical specialists working in this field of um, standardization. That is for the technical committees, if you look um, to the certific uh, to the uh, test houses or the um, uh, conformity assessment uh, uh, bodies, uh, they are or they must be used to test according to certain procedures. It's much more easy for them just to have 50 different test procedures described they have to follow. They need the test equipment for that and working instructions for that. That's all. Instead of reading 2,000 or 3,000 standards to analyze what is the requirement in. So they also can save time. And at the end also the user of a standard outside uh, standardization body or standardization uh, committee or uh, test houses, just uh, the manufacturer also could have some um, advantages if certain test procedures are for instance in the standard described at the same place in the same chapter even if uh, a certain test procedure may be not required, then you can say, okay, this chapter is void. That's okay. So I think it's a beneficial um, attitude to everybody involved in this business here. 
That sounds good and logical, a lot of benefits for the different parties involved. And uh, now we got a lot of ideas and visions and also during the sessions in the, in the relab. So what exactly has to happen to make it become true? Uh, what would be a first step? Yeah, I think uh, a first step should be, or not to say must be, uh, to improve the communication between the different parties involved. So they have to learn from each other what are the needs of the other party so that they can uh, recognize these needs and can react on these needs and can consider these needs. So that is the first step. So from my point of view, it would be a very good step forward if uh, at the very beginning when a standardization process uh, is started, um, to have a kind of a coordination given by the standardization bodies involved to the technical experts working on these standards, give them some guidance, what is uh, necessary, what is uh, necessary for other parties, not only to come at the end to a final product standard, but to consider all the needs of the different users of a standard. So the standards itself, they do not give clear working instructions to probably perform the test requirements. Looking at the field of conformity assessments, um, there are so many decision sheets involved in order to clarify standards. We have an example in the IEC EE scheme. We have 2,000 standards and 800 decision, decision sheets. Who needs them? Yeah, that's a key question, really. Who needs them? Um, Decision sheets in this uh, respect means a kind of a working instruction for the test engineers to perform certain tests. And for sure, sometimes it may be to, it may be not the right place to have such a working instruction in the standard. But in some cases, uh, you can really do this harmonization also in the standard as well, instead of having a decision sheet. So the target should be to reduce the number of decision sheets, which are nothing else than a kind of an interpretation, clarification of the standard. So as better as the standard is describing the certain requirement and how to perform a test on this requirement as less decision sheets would be needed. So that is um, also linked with communication to understand each other's needs and that means really if we can bring these different sides and views together that would really get an impact and an improvement to standardization. Can we be even a little bit more specific? What exactly um, do we have to do? What has to happen in order to reduce those decision sheets? In my opinion, it would be very helpful if uh, uh, there um, is a clear structuring um, given to the different technical committees from the standardization bodies involved. That is the toolbox. These are the procedures and these toolbox and procedures have to be involved in the new standard. That saves time, that saves um, expertise also. So um, you have so many benefits for that, but that is a task really uh, for, the, for the bodies who are responsible for organizing such technical committees. So to summarize, one of the most important and first steps. It sounds so easy and simple, but it's such an important thing. It's the communication and especially a, um, a better understanding of each other between those who develop the standards and those who need the standards. Thank you so much for your opinions, ideas, visions, thoughts. Um, that was the we talked to the head of certification at the Certification and Testing Institute in Offenbach, Dr. Klaus Kress. IEC General Meeting 2016 Connecting Communities Reinvent Standardization